I started exercising. When all this started, I was um, 220 pounds and I weighed myself today just to have an accurate number. I am at 173 pounds. Um, I still have long ways to go, but I have hope that I can get there. And um, I'm no longer taking any uh, diabetes medication. I have been uh, diabetes free for the last one year. Mm -hmm. and, um, so this has become very important for me to, to share my story with others because I have realized that th there are so many people who are struggling and you suffer in silence. Myself, I suffered in silence for the longest. I could not bring myself. It took me forever before I could even get to tell my family that I was diabetic because you just feel, there's that feeling of you have disappointed yourself, you have disappointed everybody around you. And so I have just realized that a lot of people are suffering and, um, I decided that I was going to do something to help mm -hmm. other people. Even if it's just one person who gets help, then I'll say that I've achieved something. And what I realized um, about being sick is that you are in this deep hole where you realize, you think that you can get out of it. You go to hospitals and they tell you, yeah, you'll be on diabetes medicine for the rest of your life. And you feel like this is a sentence that you have that you can not do anything about it. And realizing that mm -hmm. actually some of these things, the stuff that you can do, these ways that you can change it, I think has motivated me to be able to help other people. I have a friend of mine. Um, when I started working out, I... Well, I think it was about six months to when I started working out and changing my diet. I knew she was diabetic. She had been diabetic for about 14 years. And uh, she thought that she was always going to be diabetic. And we are, we are pretty much the same age. So she became uh, type 2 diabetic when she was a teenager. And uh, I talked to her. I talked to her, I'll say about a week ago. And she's finally off diabetes medication. And so I think it's important to have such forums because we can change the world one step at a time. That's it. Wow, uh, that, is, that is great. And I think some of, we have mentioned something that I know a lot of people uh, always ask uh, when, when it comes to when you have diabetics and now uh, what you do to get out of that uh, it's something that i know a lot of people think it is say or talk about it that it's not possible mm -hmm. uh, but what what would you say that was uh because uh, sometimes i know it was not your first time to think that i'm gonna change and make a change mm -hmm. what what really drove mm -hmm. you to be able to overcome that point that point that most of the people reach and they go, they are not able to finish to complete the cycle, but you were able to go past that. Um, I think what happened uh, for me is during the same, uh, during the same time when I had gone for the trip that I had all this medicine, uh, I lost two of my uncles, uh, my dad's brother and my dad's stepbrother, and both of them were due to diabetes complications. And um, I think it was the devastation that my dad went through because they, they passed on two weeks apart. And, um, sorry. Um, Hold on, one second. One second. I'm going to mute everybody, then I'm going to unmute. Mm -hmm. Allow the participant. So um, unmute yourself. Uh... Go ahead. Okay. Um, it was the devastation um, my dad was going through for losing two of his brothers two weeks apart to diabetes and me knowing that I'm 
head in that direction if I don't do something that really motivated me to do better. Um, and every day is a struggle. I cannot say that there's any time that I felt that, oh, no, I'm in the place that I want to be. Every day is a challenge between, am I going to have a whole bowl of ice cream or am I going to have broccoli? And I can tell you, for me, uh, having a sweet tooth, that is quite the challenge. But it's it said that it takes 21 days to change a habit. And I can say that there's some truth in that. Um, if you do something consistently for 21 days, let's say it's working out, it's eating better. When then you don't do it on day 22, day 23, you feel like something is lacking in your life. And I think that is what has kept me going. Yeah, that is, I agree with you uh, when you mentioned that, because uh, um, I, I know for people also ask me the same questions, because uh, uh, my mom was here and uh, she was, yes, she was, because she was sick and she mm -hmm. had esophageal cancer. Um, and and uh, I lost my dad through, uh, same through cancer. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think uh, the thing that drove me into it is that I read a lot. I listened a lot of videos and read a lot of uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, because you really want to know what, what is going on here. What is it that you are doing that is not, that is contributing to this? I mean, that's, yeah. that's um, I mean, and you, I mean, I read so many stuff and I read so many articles and, and, and listened to videos. Uh, but because of that, it gave me that kind of a discipline to be able to pick up on what you eat. Um, I was 184 at that time, mm -hmm. but I, and, and I went down to one, I think now I'm 154. Uh, wow. That was, uh, basically it was on the diet. And I think Esther, when we met last time, she could not even recognize me <laughs> because of the, that transition. But I think it's because of, I went on the diet and I tell people, uh, you do that diet, you work on the diet. It is a lot about discipline. And I'm sure Esther will come and share more about this. It is not easy, but you have to be very disciplined. You can start something and you do it for a couple of months but uh, be able to be a to be consistent and go over a year and another year, that is something mm -hmm. that is not easy. It, has, it requires a lot of discipline where you go to a place, you go for a party, everybody, they cook all this kind of stuff, but you will tell yourself, I would not eat it. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I went off on meat and I would do barbecue for my family, but I would not eat. It, it mm -hmm. that kind of a discipline that really most of the people are not able to follow to the end, but without following that, then you will not be able to see the the results. So uh, I mean that that's very encouraging to hear that uh, uh, you have been. And I know when I met you, when I came came to know you, you are very good in cooking, and I know you're still good, <laughs> but I don't know how you are able to stop from eating that those nice delicious food that you used to cook now you still maybe i don't know how are you still cooking that and how are you balancing it out or did you change now to cook healthy stuff uh now i have uh changed to uh cooking uh more healthy uh foods and i'm actually working on putting together a recipe book that will be helpful for people who are trying to lose weight uh, because the one thing, whenever I talk to, like, let's say, uh, our Kenyan community about diabetes, and you ask them about what they are eating, they'll tell you we are eating sweet potatoes, we are eating um, arrow roots, because all these things are termed to be healthy food. Mm -hmm. But then there's uh, the misinformation that uh, carbs are carbs. Mm -hmm. And the body does not have a mechanism to uh, realize that, oh, you got these carbs from soda and you got these carbs from sweet potato. So we are going to keep the sweet potato only. <laughs> and so it's running. Uh, I have termed it not to be more of a diet change. I, I call it a lifestyle change 
where I don't feel like I'm cutting off something from my life, but it's knowing how to make, to prepare my food better, that it is more healthy than I would have in the past. That is, that is good, that's good. I will uh, let uh, maybe, if somebody has a question, you can always uh, throw it up, uh, unmute yourself and ask a question, or uh, you can post it on the chat uh, so that I don't dominate in terms of asking a question. Anybody with a question before we proceed? Yes, I have a quick question. Um, just generally, is, is it safe to use microwave because we hear a lot of yes, don'ts, and do's and don'ts. But what's mm -hmm. the real fact about using, and does that you know, affect the food that we eat? I honestly don't have an answer to that. What I can say is um, anything that is instant is not good for you. Um, it, about using the microwave, I honestly do not have an answer. Maybe Esther could give us uh, her insights on it. Um, the, I think we're, 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 uh, we're gonna hold on that and hopefully maybe when she starts speaking, she can be able to address that part uh, during her presentation. Um, if, if you have a question, you can post it on the, on the chat uh or maybe after this esther has done uh speaking is done with speaking then you can always uh we will open up another chance for people to ask questions um so uh, at this time i will uh, uh invite um esther to take over from here uh esther for those who don't know her she is a holistic doctor here in st louis and uh, i i met her a couple of years back she's been uh, she has given a couple of talks in our forums uh, at the church. Uh, and I know she has a great clientele uh, around St. Louis, but also outside St. Louis. And uh, her life also is also a testimony. I'm sure you're going to hear that. Uh, that maybe drove her that to do to be able to work, focus on holistic health. Uh, and I'm so happy that she has been able to use her experience to share uh, and, and, and help many other people who may be struggling with different kind of health and diseases. Uh, and with that, I will, uh, I will, I will, I will I invite her to go ahead and uh, maybe take over from here. Uh, Esther, uh, go ahead. Uh, let me see, I think you're on mute. Uh, I can unmute or you can I, unmute yourself. You good? Yes. Okay. So first of all, um, it's good to see all of you. And you had sent me some questions. Mm -hmm. So and um, I don't know whether these people are the ones who send the questions, whether we want to address those ones or we want to talk more about what like uh, Grado has just um, talked about because in she talked about diabetes and somebody had asked a question about that. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what she ate, what she did, you know, it's always good to also tell people what, what did you do, you know, because they are, they are, otherwise they're gonna be left hanging, you know, mm -hmm. like if somebody has it, they wanna know, okay. So I'm not sure how you wanted to do this because I had prepared the questions. And two, yeah. my suggestion is, we stop asking questions right now and we'll ask the questions much later so mm -hmm. that we can give everybody a fair chance. I agree. So, because if we go like that and we start dwelling on questions, what will happen is the time will be gone when some people will not have given address whatever they came for. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, I think that's good. So, okay, a little bit about myself and I won't even go into that because then it will take forever. I came to work for my embassy in Washington, D.C. I'm a mother of so many kids, three. And actually right now I'm in Maryland. I even, I'm not in Missouri. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so 
uh, I had lupus and I reversed it through nutrition. And I will not even go into all the details. There'll be another time where I will talk about that uh, because I really want to, to give people what they came for, not my story. So, and that's how I ended up resigning my job from the embassy and I went back to school and became a doctor. So I've been practicing for the last 18 years as a natural health doctor. I have, I've helped so many people who have cancer. Cancer became my specialty, diabetes, high blood pressure and all that. And definitely nutrition is key. But there are so many other factors. It's not just nutrition. So, and of late have been questioning a lot of things I've been telling people in the past. Because I've seen people even go on diets, and yet they still don't reverse their diseases. And I have come now to realize that diet is like 25%. And the rest is other things that also needs to be incorporated. So when we talk of diet, sometimes we can be, it's good. It's very, very important. But it can also be misleading because a lot of people have gone into that, but have not gotten the results and they feel like it doesn't work. And again, when we talk of diet, what diet? How do you even prepare it? Because like, you, when you cook the food, you have already destroyed the food, the nutrients in it. So that's really not, when you tell people a balanced diet or a diet, when you don't elaborate on it and tell people how they need to eat that food, then definitely they will not achieve their goals or whatever they're looking for. So it's also very important. So what I normally do, I go into details. And I tell people, this is what you need to do. So of course, it's a process. Along, you know, so that's why I do like consultations and all that, so that at least people are not misled or are just left there hanging. Because, like you talk about carbohydrates, gradual and all that, they are good carbs and they are, you know, and they are bad carbs. Mm -hmm. Every vegetable you eat has carbohydrates, and we need carbohydrates because that is actually what is converted into glucose for your brain power. So you have to have some carbs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people remove everything because they think it's not. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. There are people who have issues with your brain, but they don't even know, know it's glucose that they don't have because we still need that. So again, how we teach, we have to be very careful so that at least we don't mislead people, even if we don't mean it. And then they don't achieve their, I mean, their goals, their health goals, and then they come back to you and all that. So I try to be very careful when I just don't throw information like that. Right now, I can generally generalize everything. But when somebody has like diabetes, cancer, I like to deal with one, a person one-on-one -on -one so that I know where they're coming from. And again, diet is not everything. It's, it's key, but it's not everything. So you need to go dig into the history of the person because we are different. Our genetic makeup is different. So what can work for Brad or might not work for me necessarily. And it also depends on my genetic makeup and also what I eat, my stress level, exercise, you know, all that stuff, they are all involved. So when I share, I'm very careful and I, that's why I like people to ask questions. That's why I, I told you, I want to address the issues that people have. And if I feel like somebody needs more information, then I'll have that person talk to me one-on-one -on -one so that I don't give half-baked information. Are we together? Yep. Yes. So I don't know whether you guys want us to discuss the questions that you gave or you have something else particular because maybe I don't, this is not the group that asked the question. So I need guidance from you guys because I talk too much and that's why I asked for these questions because this is, I love it and it's my passion, you know? And when I talk, I can start a seminar here for five hours and you'd be like, wow. So that's why I ask people so that I can address the issues that you guys have rather than talk about what I know you need. So uh, somebody had asked about the ketogenic diet. Is anybody here who, who asked that question? Yeah, it came from the forum. So yeah, so, so you, yeah, you can. So know, yeah, so is, are you all familiar with ketogenic diet? You can explain yes. just for those who may not be aware of it. Yes. Organic diet is normally like more high protein, very little carb carbohydrates or even almost none. 
And, you know, so, and you eat too, a, a lot of protein and good fats. They, I mean, and fats. But now, there's a lot of problems with that. I would never recommend that. I would never. Because it's a little misleading in the sense that when they tell you about fats, you don't even know who, which fats, these saturated fats. And people are going, because I have really dealt with a lot of people who have been there and they are very sick because of the diet. Because the guidance is not there. Like I just said, you cannot just tell people the high fat, you know, high protein, ketogenic diet, they are not achieving. Because what happened is when you eat too much protein, you are killing your kidneys. Because your kidneys are the one that process that. And they cannot handle all that. Then you again have no carbs or very little, and your brain needs glucose. And glucose is glucose comes from your carbs. So you have a deficiency. Then you are constipated because there's no fiber. Because a lot of people don't even eat fruits and vegetables because they emphasize so much on the protein. Okay, if you eat too much meat, because a lot of people are eating too much meat, there's no fiber. And meat is very acidic. So when it's very acidic, that is, and meat can take 72 hours to leave the body. If you have no fiber, definitely you're constipated. The fats clog your arteries. So you have high cholesterol. Anybody familiar with the Atkin, Atkin diet? Atkin diet, actually the founder or the owner or whoever came up with it, he died of heart attack because of high cholesterol, because of it. This ketogenic diet is actually a version of that. I'm not sure whether that, that's why they changed it because the other one had a bad name and now they did it, it's exactly that. So when you have high cholesterol, that means you cannot have a problem with your heart, you can have heart condition. Why it's people are treating it's good is because when you don't have carbs, you can lose weight. You lose a lot of weight, but it's not permanent. But when you lose a lot of weight, then you have no carbs to help with your glucose and then you have brain problems. A lot of people come to me when they have severe headaches because it's affecting their brain. There are people who don't eat enough. They, you know, they have problems with their diet. What, and then if you, because the ketogenic diet is very restrictive, you can eat that, you can eat that, because the emphasis is on protein. And again, remember you have to exercise. There are people who eat that and not exercise. How are you gonna use up that protein and the fat that you're eating if you're not exercising? You see, that's why I'm saying it's misleading. It works for some people, but then they'll have a problem with their kidneys. You can have kidney stones. Because then if you have that and your kidney is overworked, then the kidney stones, they all that protein starts clogging your veins. And then it goes to the pocket. And then you have a problem. You have too much uric acid in your, in your whole system. You cannot have arthritis because arthritis or gout is too much uric acid. So for me, unless you have special guidance and you know what you're doing, it's not something I would go and tell people to do. Because the idea is just to lose weight. What about those people who are on it and they don't even eat enough? They have a deficiency that malnutrition, nutrients, because they're not getting enough because it's so restrictive, you know? And then again, you, are, you know, they are good fats. If somebody can direct you on the ketogenic diet, I know somebody who had cancer and she insisted that's what she wanted to do. So we had to come up with what are the good fats that you can incorporate instead of the saturated fats. Remember, they don't go into details as which fats are you supposed to, people say creams, butter, um, margarine, or high, I mean like, meat with a lot of fat and all that. That's misleading because then you don't you know who which fat because people just go and eat and eat. So they are good fats, of course, but that's a process too. And you need to be advised by somebody who knows, not just anybody. You cannot just read a book and go and start. So that is the mistake that people make. 
But I'm not saying that it can't work. You have to be very knowledgeable or you have to have a coach, somebody to help you. But you can lose that weight, but not permanent. So it comes with a price. And if you have questions, you know, there's dehydration because again, if there's no fiber and they don't emphasize on drinking too much and then your body's trying to get whatever it can get from other organs. And then of course you can injure your liver, your kidneys and other organs in the body. So I'm going quickly because I don't want to just dwell on the ketogenic diet. Let me see whether there's a point I left. And I, I hope you guys are writing. If you have any questions, you can ask me afterwards. I talked about constipation. Definitely when there's no fiber, you're impacted. And if you continue like that, if you're impacted and you're not going to the bathroom, you know what it means. You can have colon cancer eventually, long term. Again, you need a coach. You need somebody to help you to go through that if you still insist you want the ketogenic diet. But to me, it's a very dangerous diet. And I would never recommend it. I would never take it because it's a better way of losing weight. And like uh, gradual say, it's a lifestyle change. Don't be in a hurry. You know, just after, when you start eating, like me, I was so big. Actually, I was size 18. Now I'm eight and six and sometimes 10, depending on the design of the, of the clothes. And I lost a lot of weight. I didn't even exercise. Then when I had lupus, because I became a vegan overnight. And I was doing it my smoothie, you know, and juicing and all that. I lost that weight without doing so much. I actually, I was not trying to lose weight. I was trying to get well. And I lost more than I needed to, you know? So now I know how to balance. I don't want to be too small. I also don't want to be too big. You get it? And of course, I know I need exercise as much. I'm not as good, but I, I try to walk and do the things I need to. But again, you can lose weight in so many other ways. And again, it's a lifestyle change. Don't be, it's a ketogenic diet. It's, we don't want to be on a diet. You can't, you can't live like that. So when you go back, you're going to add all, this, all that weight again. So you have to learn how to have a lifestyle change. And that's what is, that's what can, you know, can, you can live on, you know, that's what stays, that's what, you, you know, but diet is not going to be sustainable. I hope I have addressed that. And, and if anybody has a question, you bring it up. Somebody else talked about vegan diet and losing weight. Definitely, that's the way to go if you want to. And I have also seen people, and again, I used to be, you have to be a vegan, you have to be a vegan, and that's what I am. I am a vegan for the last 18 years. I've never had a problem, but again, it's also, being a vegan also can be dangerous too, because you need to balance. A lot of people just go and just do, and then, they forget they need to balance so they don't have good fats. They are just thinking it's just a smoothie, eating salads and all that. Then you need to balance. What are the good carbs? What are the good fats? What's, you know, drinking water, you know? Too much fruits also can cause a problem even if it's vegan. So you need to know how to balance. And especially if you're having a, a problem like you are sick, like with cancer or diabetes and all that, you need to know which foods work for this and which works for this. Because like now, when if you have diabetes, you can be a vegan. That's the best way to go to. But then foods are good, but you can't eat too much. There are certain foods that you cannot eat. So that's why I don't just throw information like that to people, especially if they're sick, because again, even with the good, you can harm. So you need to know exactly what you're doing, what you need to do. But somebody who is not sick, and they are that definitely it's okay. You can eat some fruits here, some nuts here, some beans here, and you can balance. People don't even know where do I get my protein if I'm a vegan. And that's the problem that I had to begin with. I was I was almost fainting because then I didn't even know where I was gonna get my protein. Because I thought protein was only coming from meat and eggs. So again, but then when you are vegan, the right way, you can lose weight. You can lose a lot of weight. And then sometimes it stabilizes if you 
or you can lose too much again you need to know exactly where to stop and what to do balance and i'll leave it at that because i know you ask me questions okay and somebody else had asked about how to transition from medicine to natural health how do you transition from medicine to natural okay one thing is you cannot stop your medication it depends on how long you have taken your medicine. I have people who have just stopped because they're excited. It's this, I, I want to go vegan, I want to go natural. And they have injured themselves to the point that they have gone back to hospital. You cannot. Like anything else, your body gets addicted. If you've been taking tea, you're addicted. That's why when you stop, you have a headache. The same with medication. Even let's say alcohol for those who have taken alcohol and all that, you know, there is that addiction. Your body's craving for that which is no. So you cannot just stop taking medication because your body can go into, what do I call it? Into a shock, for lack of a better word. Because it's called a withdrawal. It is addicted. So what you need to do is to wean yourself slowly. Slowly. Let's say you have, and you have, again, okay, if you have taken it for a long time, I would first of all do the diet while I'm still taking the medication. I take it for a long time until I feel like I'm strong enough. And then what I'll do is to tamper, to taper it, rather, to taper it slowly. That means, let's say I was taking the medication three times a day. I would carefully stop maybe taking the one for lunchtime. In the morning, I would take, but the one which I take maybe lunchtime, I would, I would you know, I would stop and listen to my body for those hours be between, between lunchtime and evening. I would listen to my body and see how I, I feel. And I would do that for a week. If I have nothing, you have no symptoms or even no headaches or anything, then I would try again with the, maybe the evening one and stay, you know, like that. But I will not just stop because it is, it, it's, it can be fatal. You don't do that. And sometimes if your doctor is cooperating, I always say, try to tell the doctors to reduce it, you know, and then you see. But sometimes the doctors don't even want to list them again because, you know, sometimes it's money. So they want you to keep taking the medicine. So I would try myself very slowly, wisely. And again, like I always say, you need to work with somebody who understands your condition because again, you don't want, again, this is people who are sick. If you have just started maybe a week, like the way maybe gradual did, and you had only taken it for three months or something like that, yes, you can, but again, you have to have a lot of wisdom. Right? You have to be knowledgeable so that at least, you, and again, listen to your body, listen to your body because you could, you could harm yourself. So, and if you have never taken and the doctor say you need to take there, like for me, when I had lupus, I refused to take the medicine. And I think that's why my results were so fast because I reversed lupus in three months. I had not taken any medication. I have seen people who have taken medication and they had lupus, they take a longer time because already the immune system has been compromised because of the side effects of the medication. So to rebuild it to the point where it can withstand all the abuse, then you need to have at least a little bit of medication while you're putting the right thing in the body. So again, that's how you transition and you have to be very wise and have somebody knowledgeable to, you know, to discuss, you know, your journey and to make sure that you are not injuring your body or your health. Two, I would do that and maybe if I'm not feeling well, I'll go back again and keep doing that, okay? And I keep doing that. So again, I will leave that and then we can talk more about that. Somebody asked about developing the discipline of following a healthy diet without fully, without failing or without falling back. Okay, again, it's a lifestyle change. There are people who want to jump 100%. I can guarantee you you're, you're going to fail. You can't. You feel it like you can do it for a week. It's like exercise. You feel like you want to do it. You want to do it. And then, especially if you're not sick, 
you can't. You know, if you're sick because you're scared of something, you are more consistent and you're scared. So you want to stick to it. But if you are not, and you are trying to do that, there will be a lot of temptations along the way. So what I tell people, if you are here and you want to go there, you cannot just jump. Baby steps, baby steps. You know where you want to go. Take baby steps. Because once you see that it's all here, you'll be encouraged. And there'll be no craving. Like so somebody who has a sweet tooth, you cannot just say you're not going to be taking tea without sugar. Let's say for that. And I'm like, this is something you have always taken. And it's sweet. And then you start going to do You know, like, no, no tea without sugar. That is, unless you're sick and you know, like me, I had to go cold turkey. I had to do it because I was given two weeks to leave. And I was scared. I did it. But when I look back, if I was, not, I was not dying, I don't think I could even have been a vegan because I loved meat. And I loved my ugari and all that. And I loved it a lot. You know? So, and we are talking about somebody who is okay, somebody who is well, they just want to change and all that and stick to it. Go baby steps. You know, start with smoothies. You know, eat less. Don't eat too much, and we'll talk about that later. Just incorporate the good stuff. And sometimes give yourself like a cheat day, like on a Sunday, or you know, when you're eating with your family, or you know, so that you don't start feeling the craving. Let's, let's say, for example, you've been eating meat and you want to go vegan. Suppose you are eating meat three times a day. You can start with not eating meat for breakfast, like whatever sausages or eggs and all that. So don't eat that. But lunch, they meet whatever you want to eat. Then dinner, you do that. Then the next day, you can say even lunch, I don't want to. And when you feel like a craving, just go, but eat very little. You see, like now, let's say you are eating a chunk of meat like this. Eat just a small piece so that you have no craving. You know? So I like chocolate. And I know, you know, I just, now I don't even care about it. I used to love it. But because I did, I, I had a craving for it. After I got well, I wanted to go back to my chocolate. And as there was a craving and all that. So do you know I used to eat a whole bar like this? In what? That within an hour, I will not stop until it's gone. So I started eating just a little piece like that. And now after sometimes I didn't want to. So Eat a small piece. So when it comes to meat for those people, because I, you know, I talk to a lot of people, because you see, you don't want to leave anybody out. Because if it's vegan, you have to be a vegan, you have to be a vegan. A lot of people tend to feel like, oh my God, I can't survive without it. I'll die, you know? So I take them slowly. And these are people who are not sick. People who are sick, I insist you got to do this for at least three to six months. By then, they have lost their, in, in their interest, you know, their... their, their um, their desire for meat and all that. And there are others who hope that they still want to eat, but a little bit. You know, I work with everybody. So I tell women, at least the much meat you can eat a day is two and a half grams, two and a half. For men, it's three and a half. So you can either, either Put that like you know you 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 know you divide that into three, or you just eat one. A lot of people eat that two and a half, two and a half, two. And that's too much. Meat stays in the body for seventy two hours before it leaves the body, and and you are abusing your body like that because we are really not meant to be eating meat and all that. But we eat too much and it just sits there. Anyway, so again, it's going slow, baby steps. Till you get where you want. Before you know it, you really don't even have a desire for that meat or whatever because that's something you want. Because what you want when you put it here, you can achieve. Because nobody's forcing you to, you want, and then you understand what it does to you. Then before you know it, you don't have. And some, you know, I used to love meat. If I go to people's house right now, they can roast the meat, they can do whatever. I wouldn't even care about it. I even don't even have a desire. I don't even feel it. I don't want. I just don't want. So you can do that. So 
reversing diabetes, I mean, that's a lot of details, okay? We cannot exhaust that here. And again, I say, I don't just say, oh, you do ABCD. I need to know your history. I know to know what you're doing. I know to know your stress level because it's not just diet. It's much, much more than that. If we really need to achieve something, I need to go into details. So I'm very careful not to just throw things and I'm always telling people, yes, you can reverse it. And a lot of people have done it like gradual and other people, but you're different from the other person. So I need more details to know where to start with you. So I'm gonna leave that like that because it's a lot of details. And if somebody wants that, we can talk about that later with the person. And Gradua is also there to help because she had her own experience. Okay, common mistakes we make in our diet. The common mistake we make in our diet, and again, some of them I'm gonna repeat, is eating too much carbs or eating too much protein. And you don't do the essential fatty acids like the omega-3, omega-6, which are so, so important. We cook everything. So the food that we cook, you destroy all the nutrition in it because anything you hit above 110 degrees, you have destroyed the nutrition in it. So you are actually not eating anything. You are eating that, like ugali, honestly. It's a waste. We eat it, I eat it when I eat it. But when you look at it, it has no value. It has no nutrition value. It has, doesn't. First of all, the unga itself is refined. Then you cook it, really nothing. But we are addicted to it, we know it's good and we feel good, but it's all here. But when you look at the nutrition value, there's nothing. When you take a smoothie, raw, not cooked with all that good stuff, this is it. Our cells, our bodies are living cells. Yeah, we are not, that's why we are alive. The minute your cells start dying, especially when you're Cancer, like when you see you're dying, you'll be dead because we are a trillion of cells. These cells are living cells. So we need to give them living food. And that's where we take the smoothies. We still take, and this is what I do personally. My diet is 85% raw and cooked. And 25% cooked. Because the cooked is useless to the body. It will give me warmth and a lot of other little things, if I, like the beans, it will make, give you a little bit of protein, maybe still left. It's like now a carrot. If you take a carrot, cook it, it's destroyed. The one that is raw, that's where the nutrients are. And that's why smoothies, juicing are so important, salads for those who eat. I don't chew enough. I don't digest enough my fiber. So I put everything which is raw in a smoothie or I juice. Because I do, and I, I do smoothies because of fiber. I need that. And I put other things. So of course, we'll talk about that if you want to. So, so we eat, again, we eat too much. We eat too much. And that's why you see people are aging so fast. Because you're overworking your body. Then we eat late. So we eat late, and then we go to sleep. Our bodies... Our bodies are supposed to heal or rejuvenate from 9.30 to 2 a.m. So when we eat late, your body is not resting. And it depends on also what you have eaten. When you eat meat and ugali and all that, honestly, you have a your body already. There's no nutrition in it. Your body, you work the whole night trying to utilize that food, process it. In the morning, you're exhausted, like you never even slept. Then you continue eating like that. And again, it depends on all what you're eating. Then you're abusing your body. Before you know it, you're a very tired person. You, are, you know, you have aches all over, like fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia means muscle pain all over. I don't know what I did. Can't see myself. My, you know, my fibromyalgia is aches throughout the body. People say I'm making do about arthritis because of too much stuff that are not good in your body. So all that. So then before you know it, you can't even walk. So you have exposed your body to diseases and ailments that you don't even know where they're coming from. It's because of what you're eating, when you're eating it. And of course, 
along, you, you need to be sleeping enough. But when you have eaten like that, you can have tea. Again, that's abusing your body. So eating too much. Again, I had said eating too much of one thing. So you eat too much either protein or carbs and not balanced. A balanced diet is so important. You are not drinking enough water. I saw somebody asking about enough water. Again, you need eight, eight, eight ounce glasses of water. I take three of this, at least to know that I have enough. But I also take some juices and smoothies that are also considered as water because it's liquid. So you don't have to take like eight glasses of uh, eight glasses of water if you are also taking some juices and you're also taking water. But to me, you cannot overdo it. But if you drink a lot of water, let me tell you this a caveat. If you drink too much water, you can dilute your sodium, especially those people who are doing exercise. You have to be very careful. Your body needs sodium, good sodium. Like the one you get from celery, celery juice. That's why everybody wants to take celery juice. So, and that's the best sodium you can get from that vegetable. So you have to take a little bit of sea salt on your tongue if you drink too much. Like at least if you drink like maybe 12 to 14 glasses of water a day, you may be diluting. And again, it depends on what else you are eating because if you are eating some things that don't even have natural sodium, you can have a deficiency. And again, people think it's just diet. You really need to understand what this diet is all about. And that's the misleading part. We don't understand it. We had graduates doing this and we just jump, start drinking. And maybe she, she's not telling us everything because she can only share so much, you know? She can't share everything. I can't share everything that I do. When, like when I say a smoothie, you don't even know how, what I put in my smoothies, you know what I'm saying? Then you just go do a smoothie and expect it. And maybe I'm putting other things to help my body. So again, that's why you need more information. You need information, you need to read, you need to find out. It's your health, please, it's your health. Don't depend on other people to tell you exactly. You can ask questions and all that, but you also need to be in charge. Nobody can give you everything. So we say we cook everything. So we can, you know, we the enzymes are the light force, light force of your cells. So if you cook everything, you are actually starving your cells, which you are. You are just cells. When those cells are not fed, you age very fast, you get sick, and you're always tired. Uh, okay, I talked about raw foods and all that. And then of course we are reheating our food all the time. Like that's where the microwave came in, really microwave. But let me not just start answering about the microwave, but when you keep reheating your food, that is dead, dead, dead food. What is it helping you with? Nothing. You are not, you're just feeling full, but actually you are starved. And when you heat something in the, in the like meat, plastic, like plastic container, and you have like meat and all that, and then radiation, you put it in your microwave, you are actually causing cancer in your body. That's cancer right there. Because that combination is just carcinogen. Carcinogens are agents that cause cancer. So, and I'll talk about microwave. It's the most dangerous thing you have. Then I have. Mm. I think there are some questions on uh, on the chat. Maybe we can combine the one that you have and the one that the chat, so that we can okay. meet everybody. I think, I'm, I, I think that is the last question I had. I mean, that's so. I think I'm exhausted that one. Supplementation. There are people who want to supplement. They just go and because somebody said get this. Some of the supplementation or supplements are useless. They have nothing because everybody wants to sell something. You need to know, is it coming from a reputable company? What is it in it? Because some of it are just useless. They are just packaged and they're processed and they have nothing. So I do not even actually, unless I work on one-on-one, -on -one, I do not, if you don't know, just get your nutrients from your food. I don't supplement. I don't take supplements. So I don't believe in them. But they are only B12, 
with folic acid and vitamin six. That's the one because you cannot get it even from food. Because I am a vegan. And when you are vegan, definitely you're going to have a problem with B12. So that one you must supplement. And you also have to know which one. Because a lot of people have it there. Like if you go to Whole Foods or any natural health food store, you, you find like 20 types of B12. You don't know which one. And you just grab and, that, and some of them are just useless. Again, you need guidance to know which one am I supposed to take from where. And of course, you need, you need to do a research. And it's, again, it's your health. Health is very expensive. When you lose it, it's very expensive to gain it. So if you are really concerned about your health, because your health is your wealth, your health is you. When you don't have it, you're useless to yourself and useless even to your family, to anybody. So you have to take it more seriously than even your job. Because why you are going to your job today is because you're healthy. Those who cannot even, those who have lost their health, they can't, they, they can't do anything for themselves. They're done. So I always say, go an extra mile and find out what is this I'm putting in. Call a company. If you don't have somebody to guide you, find out. They are more than willing to tell you that. Do a research. What is this? The internet is there with a lot of information. Again, you can't depend on people to tell you. I am here. But like now, I deal with so many people. Even if I want, I cannot just give you all the details. Some things you just have to do it yourself. You have to do your research. And it's there. It's available and you can do it. Okay. I think I'm going to leave it at that. And I'll give you a little tip at the end. Okay. Let's, let's just go a few questions that I see here. Uh, uh, and I think some of them may be a reputation, so we don't have to answer them if you have already answered. Okay. Um, the first one, do you track uh, calories on your on all your meals? And if so, is there a limit beyond which you do so that you don't cross? No, I don't. It's a lot of work. It's useless. Why? Because once you know what you're eating, you don't have to. It's a lot of work. People, t again... The information that is out there, everybody wants to come up with something and they complicate the whole thing. Everything which is from God is so simple. But because I want to make money, I'll come up with a little program and charge for it so that it looks something. And that the other person, you don't have to. If you're eating right, you don't have to because you know how to balance. You don't have to count calories because like now carbs, you need to eat less of that and the right ones. You know, 35% of that, 25% of protein and good fats, you're good to go and you're exercising. So you eat less. That's why the portions, portions, portions are so important. And I guide people into portions, you know. Like, give me a minute. Although I'm not in my house. Yeah, so what to see on Najaza Ugali, you, you put oh, Ugali. Okay. <laughs> the whole mountain of Ugali and, uh, and uh, two kilos of nyama because you have protein and starch, right? But now I eat oatmeal in the morning. Oatmeal in the morning, you only, okay. I'll give me another <laughs> minute. Oh my gosh. That is good. This is good information. I really, I hope uh, it's okay. going to benefit you guys. So oh, let me show you this. Although I'm not in my house, I have every garden. So this is a cup, okay? Oatmeal. So you need to have a cup of oatmeal. This is a half a cup. That's what you need to take, right? Then when you cook it, it becomes a cup, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think, oh, it's oatmeal, like gradual, you have to say that, oh, it's oatmeal. So you put, it's healthy. You put a whole big bowl. <laughs> it will give you weight and you're not losing that weight because you're eating too much, even the good. So you need to know it's not calories, it's portions. So that's why we have this. When it comes to fruits, this is too much, depending on which fruit. So a whole cup of this, which is like this anyway, a 
cup of fruit. You can eat a cup of fruit. If you have diabetes, then you know you can do that. But when it comes to smoothies, look at what I take. Can you all see? This is what I take a day. Like four glasses, okay. But I put a lot of vegetables, lemon, so that because I'm not gonna put too much fruits, and I like pineapples and all that. I don't wanna put, like, but I'm not sick, so I can eat more fruits than somebody who is sick. You get it? Because you see, the body can only take enough of what it needs, suppose like for protein. If the body can only take 25% and you give it 40, the other 15% is gonna be converted into bad fat. And then it will affect you, even if it was good protein. So even the good carbs, if you overeat, it's gonna be converted into sugar, which can also give you diabetes. So you are not achieving your goal if you are eating too much of that. But oatmeal is the best for diabetes. But when you overeat it, then you cannot achieve, you know, your health goals. Did I answer the question? Yes, that's good. That's good. Uh, the next one, can you give direction on high blood pressure diet? <laughs> again, again, like I say, I would, but throwing information like that to you, I need to draw a little bit of the history and all that. But definitely a vegan diet would be the way to go, but you need to balance it. And because it's all about cholesterol and we just goes and clogs your artery and then you have blood pressure. And I can explain that if I was just doing a, a um, if I was just doing a, a seminar or even a talk on blood pressure, we can go into details, but now we can, we don't have that much time to do that. Yes, portion, portions and balancing. That's good, that's a good one. Uh, the next one, how much water, I think you talked to this, how much water is good in a day? Uh, I came across people taking three liters of a day. Talk about juicing vegetables or fruits. I think you've touched that when you are saying- Juicing is very important, it's good. Again, there are more specific ones for different diseases. And I go into details when I'm working with somebody, you know, depending on where they are, whatever they are dealing with, it's the best because it has all the nutrients, it has enzymes, fiber. So, you know, that is, that is good. So juicing water, again, if you take too much, you need to be careful about your sodium because you can deplete yourself of it and it, it, it can also cause some problems. Again, good. it's about balancing everything, but definitely you can go wrong with water. That's absolutely, that's good. Uh, the other is uh, somebody say, say it's all about balance, whole foods over processed food. Uh, I think it's mentioning it's why you need to mm -hmm. go more on whole foods yes. uh, than, than the process. The process is sweet and fast, but uh, there are these always some consequences that comes with it. Yes. And, uh, and we also reminded that to eat food like it's medicine or you're gonna eat medicine like it's food. So it's up to you, make a choice. Uh, please give some examples of what goes into your smoothie and juices. Uh, I think you touch about more of uh, fruits and uh, vegetables so you can juice more of vegetables. I mean, eat more vegetables either in the smoothie or juicing them, that's, that's good for you as, as raw food. You touch that. Okay. Uh, you want me to touch? Okay, go ahead. Okay, since the time I had lupus, I realized that the pineapple is very good for inflammation and every disease is inflammation. Every, whether it's cancer, ever, it's inflammation in the body. So for me, a pineapple is a must every day. It's a must and it's the best. It, has, it is the only one that has an enzyme called bromelain which is very good for like arthritis, anything to do with um, joint pains and all that. So for me, I tell people, you should incorporate a pineapple. And I also put flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds. I put nuts, different days. So I alternate vegetables, I do beets. So every vegetable has its own properties, nutrients. So I try to alternate them. But what I always make sure that I have, because again, we are not, eat, I'm a vegan, so we are not eating meat. So you have to make sure that you have enough, 
essential fatty acids. And since we are not getting it from fish and all that, although I take, sometimes I take fish oil from a certain company. So I'm not just going to tell you to do that. You have to be careful. It's from Norway, Norwegian. It's a little pricey, but that's the only clean one because it doesn't have mercury. You know fish has mercury for those people who eat meat, fish, and it is carcinogenic. Of course, fish, mercury can cause brain tumor and brain cancer. So you have to be very careful. And there's so much I can share on the mercury and all that from what, you know, deodorants, all that, the things that we use. Anyway, so I, since I don't take like fish, I make sure I get my essential fatty acids, the omega-3, omega-6 from flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, um, nuts, walnuts. Walnuts has a lot of that. And you just need a little bit of it, not too much of it. And, and sometimes I put a lot of flax seeds. You can't go wrong with that. Actually, it, it, flax seed actually is very good for prostate cancer and mm -hmm. colon cancer. So those are very, very good. I put uh, pumpkin seeds because they have zinc. They are very good for men, especially because that's how they get the prostate. Because when you have prostate issues, you are lacking um, zinc. I, you know, and we all need that. So we need zinc. So I put that. So I have, I understand everything. What comes from this one? What comes from this one? So I try to balance all that so that I don't have a deficiency. Especially when you are vegan, you need to be very careful. Because you need to balance, otherwise you can have a deficiency. And so that's my smoothies. And my juices definitely is vegetables and all that. But what more, I in fact, I put more in my smoothies because the juice you can only do so much. Because you can't put flax seeds in your juice, otherwise you're going to mess your juicer, you know, because they stick. So. Good. That's good. And I think I, I have something I'm going to share on the text about this. It talks about the sources of uh, each vegetables. I'm going to share that uh, uh, as we go ahead. And uh, somebody had just mentioned about the juicer, uh, if they're expensive or cheap. Uh, I think I got one, my juicer, I got it at Walmart uh, at around $60 or something. Yeah, let me talk about the juices, okay? Mm. Because it's very, very important for people to understand. There are two types of juices. One, two types, not the, the ones you buy, the types. Mm -hmm. It's not the blend, it's the types. They are masticators and they are centrifugal. Like the one you bought from Walmart, it's a centrifugal. Those are the ones available anywhere. They spin the juice. So mm -hmm. they allow oxygen to enter the juice. So oxidation takes place then that means you cannot keep your juice for more than two hours. If mm -hmm. you do, then you are taking just colored water. Mm -hmm. So it is useless, it's just colored water. So somebody who out, so what I recommend is if you have to go with a cheaper juicer, which of the centrifugals are a little cheaper, then you have to choose and drink your juice immediately. immediately. Don't try to keep it. Mm -hmm. And if you have to keep it at least maybe for an hour or so, you have to take a whole, I mean, like, let's say you have to take a bottle, small ones, if you don't have enough, make sure that it's all the way full to the brim because you don't want more oxygen to, take, to, to enter. If you don't have enough juice, add some water so that there's no space. It's full to the brim and airtight it. Otherwise, if you put it like this, like you see now this is halfway, you are allowing oxygen to enter, it, so it's gonna be useless. So you, it has to be airtight and full to the brain. That's for juices. So for somebody who is sick, I would recommend you go to a higher juicer, the masticators, because you, depending on which one, because they are also different ones, you can keep the juice for 13 hours and more, depending. Like there's a champion juicer, which is a, uh, the cheapest, among many of them, and you can keep a juice, your juice with a masticator, with a champion juicer for 13 hours, 15 hours. Then when you buy a green star juicer, you can keep it for two days. And then of course no work, they are more expensive as you go. But if you are sick, because you don't you want to drink more than one glass of juice, because it's not enough, you're trying to reverse the disease. So you 
cannot just drink one and think you're doing anything. You need like 10 to 13. When I had lupus, I was taking 13 glasses of juice every day. And I had a, I had a champion juicer. And I, I was putting it in small containers so that it's enough, so that when I take one, I drink. Because if you keep opening and closing, you are allowing oxygen to enter. So it gets oxidated. You don't want that. And then you can keep that juice for, I was actually keeping my juice for a day. So the following day, then you juice again like that. And that's how you get well, because you've got to flood yourself, flood your body with nutrition. And that's how we do it. It's more detailed than that, but I'll leave it at that. So that's what you do. So I think- I, okay. I, I think that there's another one here. Uh, a friend of mine has lost a lot of weight by drinking water with apple cider vinegar, fasting in the morning and later at, late at night. Uh, is, what, what do you, what do you, what's your point not, on this? That's not healthy. How long is, is the person going to continue like that? She or he has no idea the damage. Mm -hmm. Eventually, she's going to have a problem. Because how? The body is meant to be fed. You have cells. That's good to fast, but it's temporary. You cannot continue like this. You may lose. It's like now the ketogenic diet where we say you can lose weight. That's not sustainable. If it's just that and all that, she's starving her cells. So I think that I don't know. I don't think I don't think she meant that she's only drinking that as the only food. I also think is eating. eating and then probably you are drinking in the morning. You drink in addition to your diet. Oh, okay. Then that's fine because when I had um, lupus, actually I was taking a lot of apple cider vinegar. It's the best and it's also very good for inflammation. If you have somebody with arthritis, any joint pain, that's the way to go. Okay. Fasting is good, but definitely you also know that you can fast. You know, you need to be wise about that. Because I also have seen people who, that is intermittent fasting. I guess that's what she's talking about. Mm. That's the in thing. I do intermittent fasting because I, I eat at 11. And I stop eating at 6. So I, I actually do intermittent fasting for 15 hours and I eat at, and that way you can sustain your, your weight. It's the best because your body needs to rest too. So again, you need some, I don't want to confuse anybody. If they want to talk to me about that, that's fine. Okay, great. Uh, and then there is a, we must be, must food be organic? Uh, I know that is, a, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge to be able to get, uh, but, but okay, if, try the best. Yeah, if you are juicing, I recommend because I also know it's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah. Even if you have family and all that, it's not sustainable. Okay, if you're juicing, anything you're juicing, especially kale and spinach, please, it has to be organic. Mm -hmm. Because that, you don't want to put Chemical. raw, all that stuff in your body. Mm -hmm because then you, you, are, you are going to defeat the purpose of even trying to eat healthy because you're putting all those pesticides in your body. Mm -hmm. But anything you are cooking, you don't have to buy organic. Anything you are peeling, like bananas, of course, they are more sweeter when they are organic. I have tried both. And sometimes because I'm alone, I can afford it. But for somebody who has a family and all that and they're having issues and all that, you don't really have to buy organic because you are peeling it. You know, like a pineapple, definitely have never even tried to buy organic because it's extremely expensive and I don't see why. So, because you're peeling, anything you're peeling. Well, when it comes to apples, it's one of the that is 12, that it doesn't. If you are actually juicing it or making a smoothie, I would go organic or I peel. But remember, the nutrients are on the skin. <laughs> so you are losing a lot of nutrition with the apples. But if that's all you can do and you have a family, it's better than nothing. And nothing. And the best thing is buy those apples. They are the most sprayed yeah. with pesticides. Mm -hmm. So wash them nicely, rinse them with, and actually I would um, soak them in apple cider vinegar. And then, because that's what I do sometimes with uh, grapes, I wash them, then I put them in apple cider vinegar in a bowl. And I let them stay there 
and then uh, maybe after an hour or something I remove them and then I, you know, I have like boiled water and then I rinse out and then you can eat. Awesome. So yeah. That is great information. I'm also learning a lot from this. I'm really yeah. learning a lot. Um, and I think uh, that somebody was asking what type of oatmeal would you recommend? Yeah, I think the different types of oatmeal. They're different. Good. Yes, they say, uh, the, the, what do you call it? The one which is just like cut, they call it what? Still cut or rolled? Still cut, yes. Those mm -hmm. are the best. But because it, the steel cut is too, it takes too long. Mm -hmm. uh, I recommend, well, if people can do that if they want to, but again, uh, rolled oats, rolled oats, they're good. But I also, my mind, what I do, I do overnight oats, which I don't cook. Have you heard of that? You tell us. Okay, you do the oats, remember the cup, okay? I do that and I soak it in water. Or the people use like uh, oat, milk, oat milk or any nut milk you like. I don't like all that. So I put it in water myself and I put it in my fridge. I soak with half a cup. If, if it's half a cup, I put a cup of water. And in the morning, it's like cooked because I want it raw. And then I put my fruits and my tea. Oh, normally I put it with my chia seeds. So I put half and I put it in a glass. You know, grass jar like the mission jar, and then I put a tablespoon or two tablespoons of flax seed, chia seed, whatever I have. Then I let it, let it stay. In the morning, it's like swollen because you know it's quiver. I don't know what you call it. You know, it mm. swells. You know, it's softer. You know, the chia seeds are softer. And then I put my fruit and I eat it raw, and it's the most healthy thing ever. Mm. Yeah, that is good. And and I... If you want to cook. Cook it, but cook it just a little bit. It cooks quick, you know. And then I rinse it with water if I cook it to remove all the gluten because it makes you have all that phlegm, you know, makamati and all that. And then I put my, my fruits. There are different ways of preparing, but definitely rolled oats is the most easiest, but to cook, to prepare. Good, good, good. That, that's awesome. I see somebody say it's great, great for us. Um, and I know in the last conversation, you also talked about people soaking, I mean, recommending people soaking their beans and yes. uh, stuff before you cook. Yes. Uh, so that you cook less time, and unlike uh, and when we- the gas. Put the, yeah, and remove the gas. So that was, that, that's good to mention that. Mm -hmm. So I, it looks like we are past uh, almost 7.30. Yes. I really, really appreciate time and patience for everybody who's been on the forum. I see Rahab. Ram was Ram was a, does a good job on uh, educating people on on on, on juicing stuff, uh, and, and I think uh, we will have a session with you uh, if you don't mind. Uh, you can also share about some of the experiences. Uh, uh, is that okay? Is that okay, Rahab? Yeah, definitely. I, I am so glad we had this very good information. Um, I'm all about whole foods. Uh, raw is the way to go. Like she said, cooking is just killing everything though. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really glad we had this and I can definitely uh, talk about juicing and she touched on the two types of juices and I believe it's I'd rather spend more money on a juicer than going to, you know, foot a $4,000 bill or $25,000 bill for a hospital bed. I feel like a $300 juicer is way cheaper than the investment if you're pharmacy. Yeah. Pharmacy. Yeah. Pharmacy. yeah. Yes. So yes, health is wealth. <laughs> that is true. That. that is true. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, uh, um, Rahab, you mentioned something. We, we, I joined a club that uh, the African Black American Club. It's called Black Blacks Who Bike. Mm -hmm. When I went there, I had somebody who had a bike was uh, uh, he bought it for four thousand dollars a bike. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was asking why would you do that, and he told me you're investing in your health. Absolutely. You either invest four thousand dollars for a bike, yes. or you pay twenty thousand dollars for your oh. medical bill. Yes. So you make a choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I think from that time I had to go and buy another bike. <laughs> yes. I yes. to that advice. Expensive for one, but it's a one-time deal. You know, mm -hmm. once you spend like 
300 or even 500 to buy a juicer. Mm -hmm. That's like health for the whole family. Absolutely. It will stay forever. Like now the one I bought, mm -hmm. actually I gave somebody who had cancer last year and I bought it in 2000, my champion juicer. Mm. It was there. Because now, because I was doing so much recommending, so one of the companies that was high-end, like, uh, what is this? Um, Green Star Juicer, they're about five, 500 to 700. Mm -hmm. Because I recommended so many people, they gave me a juicer. Yeah. And need to talk to you about that. Yeah, so they gave me a juicer for free, so, and it's the highest. So I kept that one. And this one, which is the champion, when I talk to people and I find that they really need it and they have like cancer and all that, I kind of rent them. And then after they finish and they can afford theirs, they give it back so I can give somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still going and, you know, so it's an investment. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So uh, I, I would say we'll, we're really, really over time here. But if you have somebody have a question, because this is very important, I, I really, really, uh, I can't emphasize more than, I mean, what you guys have said, have talked about. Um, I, I feel like there is a lot of issues that we're dealing with right now, COVID-19, diabetics, um, blood pressure, and all those kind of stuff. And, and I feel what like- What we can do is, again, depending on time, I love to give information, is to do, it's good for this kind of forum, but I think also like a support group whereby we can talk about cancer one day so that we can exhaust mm -hmm. all the information. Because I'm sure if like somebody had cancer here, we have really not addressed the issue, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we can go into mm -hmm. details in a forum like this. But if we can, maybe you can mobilize the people who maybe have that and try, we just try to see how many people want to know because that information is there, you know? Mm. So if somebody wants to know maybe about cancer and we come and talk about diabetes, we are not addressing the issue with the cancer patient. So mm. if we can do like maybe some topics and people can come on board who have maybe, I mean, everybody has somebody who they know who has cancer or, you know, or something. They can even come and listen out. There are people who have it and we can exhaust all the information. And the, the, the most important rather, it's not everything. So at least somebody can know where to start. Then we can do that. And we still can have something like this also, whereby we can just have questions like an open forum. But we can also do that because when it's more a little bit more detailed, it's much more helpful for those who are mm -hmm. dealing with these issues. I mean, it's a, just a suggestion for me. I, no, I, I like that. That's a good idea, actually. And and I would wish, I would wish if we can be able to have, like you said, more of this where people we will have a specific day, you talk a specific topic yeah. and make it a consistency. Uh, a consistent program where you're meeting either people meet once every two weeks or once a month because you also need some motivation some people who can be able exactly. to exactly and you know because like now when actually when i had lupus i didn't know anybody who had it it was god and the book the book i got i was just reading that i was lost and i wish i had somebody like me who could even give me a little bit more i was fainting because i didn't know well am i gonna get protein from I used to cry because and there was nobody I could call and ask because I didn't know anybody mm. I was so lost so I can imagine somebody else who have just been let's say diagnosed with cancer or something and they're like oh my god where do I start you know so just information is power it is yeah, yeah. so I guess it can help somebody to know where to start even to ask a question okay you go get this it's not maybe everything who get this? They at least they know where to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think I agree. We we I hope we we can be able to get some help from uh, Gladwell uh, Rahab. I think those are the experts, and maybe just champion a group that will be able to give us some direction. You never know who you might be able to help uh, through the process. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. Uh, uh, just like you, maybe I, in the process, and I Esther does this as a her profession, if you really want to connect and maybe do one-on-one, -on -one, uh, she does that and I'm sure she can be able to give you a good rate. Um, okay, and, I do that. Yeah. yeah, so because that's a, that's a business and, and I know it. Uh, when you talk about health, and like you said, it's an investment. Everybody has to invest. Yeah. It all depends on what you want. So I think uh, if you, what maybe I can, I can 
put your number on the chat. Anybody can reach out to you on that? Yes, and I'll give you my email too, because my email is better. Because you uh, know, sometimes I'm with clients like yeah, that. I think, yeah. I Do you, you, can, you want to post it on the chat there? Yeah, I closed it on the I closed my office. Yeah, so that because so of now I'm doing everything online. So sometimes it's hard for me to talk on the phone. Yeah, so if you can put it on the chat, that would be good. Yeah, but still, you can have my phone text me and all that, and but email me the details because again, what I realized also, like and I should say it again, I'm very careful because some people can only take ten percent of what I say, but if they if the email is detailed, so you can go back and read. Yeah, yeah. And that way, I'm giving you information. You won't come and tell me. I thought you said this because you can read it. And uh, that is going, it's going to protect me and also you so that you don't do the wrong thing. And also you don't, I also have to make sure that I'm covering myself because I also don't want to give somebody the wrong information. Mm, that, that's so good. that's why I write and read it again. I'm like, I know what I'm saying and we can all go back there. And again, I may not be available, but you can also go refer to the email. And then of course, if it's a program you work with, if I work with people, with Kenyans, I'm a little, I'm lenient. Of course, this is what I do for a living. So definitely I charge when it comes to programs. But I take you by the hands. But at the same time, what I do, I'm more lenient. Most of my clients are like people who have money, of, of, you know, because mostly I'm white people actually, because those are the people I work with, they follow through. Our people, sometimes they don't follow through and all that, and it's a problem. But at the same time, I don't like charge them so much because I also want them to be to be helped, you know, because I know we are all struggling and all that. So I consider that. So don't fear. <laughs> Just come, let's talk and see how we how we can help each other. That that's good. That's good. And I, I can tell you, I can assure you, the people who've been here for uh, over an hour and 30 minutes, I can tell you these people would follow up all through. So this is a group that yeah. start something and they finish. So yeah, let me tell don't you, worry about started, that. When I started my seminars and all that, I used to have one person, <laughs> you know, two or three. Now I have so many people. Sometimes I'm like, oh my God. So I started doing now groups because I didn't have time now. That's why I do support groups mm. because then I can address because otherwise if you do one-on-one, -on -one, it's just exhausting Yeah. because there's so many people who need it. Yeah. Great, great. I think we're going to have our own support group. And I think in the forum, I forgot to a question that I see that somebody was asking, what brand of B12 would you recommend? Okay, there's a brand of B12, which I buy from this company. How about I try to give you the information when I write? Yeah, you can, you can send it to me. I can share with that because I'm also interested to know about the B12. Yeah, because I also want you to, to get it at a cheap, cheaper price. That's why I don't want to just, so you can go online and get it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Right. That's the uh, one I highly recommend. If anybody wants to supplement because of different issues, because I, I wear the situation, I say, okay, maybe you're so weak, maybe you need a little bit of this, but I have done a lot of research on supplementation and I can recommend the right one. I do not have any special interest in them, so there's no nothing they're giving me, but yeah. that's what I take. And of course, if when it comes to that, I can recommend this one is the best and this one is the best. Like iron and all that, so I have good... And you can get it even from Whole Foods. So. All right. And some of them, yeah. I think that's good. Of sleep. People ignore sleeping. It's so important. And that's why I was saying it's not just diet. Talk. Plenty of sleep. Stay active. Exercise because you need oxygen in your cells so that cancer doesn't develop. Eat whole plant foods. Whole plant foods. We can talk about that next time. Limit sugar intake. Sugar, 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 a lot of tea with sugar and milk and all that. That's not good for your body. So limit that if you have to for now. Reduce stress. Stress is number one killer. Stress, you can eat everything. You can exercise. If you're stressed, you can die. It can kill you. And we can talk about how to do that. If you're smoking, because maybe not everybody is a Christian here, not everybody is healthy, quit smoking. Definitely that. Then... Moderation. That means eat less. Don't eat too much. You are killing the body. That's killing your skin. I know. <laughs> and a lot of Japanese. The Mandazi. The Mandazi. Wakanisa. 
And then <laughs> more, <laughs> more than anything else there, more than anything else because we leave it out. <laughs> we can't do anything. You know, Jesus said, by myself, I can do nothing. And unless the Lord build the house, we labor in vain. Unless God does it, the food will not do it. Because it's only God who can. That food actually doesn't have any power. But the strength of this, you know, God is the one who heals. The food doesn't True. have power. We are only following what God wants us. Because God said, Genesis 1, 29, I won't even go into that. He knows what he gave us from the garden. The way it is, that's what he wants us to eat. When we started cooking, we destroyed, and then the lifespan of a man was reduced to 120 instead of 70. <laughs> I can go into that. So prayers, trusting God, starting with God, finishing with God, and then you can direct you to where you need to go. Please, it's only God who can heal. Very true. So now maybe somebody will pray for us so that we can finish with God. I, I think, I, Sebastian, how long have you been a, a vegetarian? Uh, six, six, six years now. I thought you became a vegetarian before. No, I, I think seven years. You know, then I was cheating. I'm saying now the faithful one. <laughs> That's okay. That's good. We cheat right here and there. A lot of people do, and it's fine. As yeah. if you're not sick, it's okay. But if you're sick, again, if you're sick, at least the first three, depending on the problem, three, maybe to 18 months, it's good to be consistent. And then after that, if you cheat, it's okay. It's not going to affect you because your immune system is rebuilt yeah. and at least it can, it, it, it can help. But when it's still ailing and you still, you need to be very consistent and very serious. Absolutely. I think, good, I think good seven consistent years as a vegetarian. Oh, wow. That's yeah. good. Yes. Yeah, so. and, and, and I think the point that I will also put it is we, you don't have to be sick to be able to Way to be sick so that you can be able yes, to. Yes, prevention is better than cure. Better prevent it. Yes. To be able to. I think that's something that I, I wanted to add is that there is a group also, if you want to join a group that does exercise walking, Gladwell and, and, and Rahab, they're in charge of that. They meet on Saturdays, they go at park, and then, and then you can do your own stuff at your home and you can share with the group. You can do your walk at the neighborhood. I came out because I couldn't even deal with it because I'm traveling a lot. Yeah. So if yeah. I wasn't trying to be rude. Okay, guys. I yeah. So <laughs> that is fine. So you can join that group and there's a WhatsApp group. People do that. If you walk on your neighborhood, you just sign up as Trava and then you can just post to encourage others and also to be encouraged. If you want to join, there is a bike group that also meet people. People do their own bikes. I think we. Yeah, that's the best thing to do. So, you, it, so what are you planning to do in winter? Yeah. I think in the media you can do your own. You can be out. <laughs> yeah. Basketball. Basketball. There is a group that Sebastian is in charge of the basketball. If you okay. want to join. Okay. Uh, and please tell Dauri driving is not one of the because Dauri was saying there's a group for driving. No, driving is not. <laughs> That's what driving he was saying. Too much. Okay. <laughs> Dauri, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and if you want to, if you have an idea of... Oh, somebody is asking about sugar or honey. What do you do? I would recommend, if you must, raw honey, not just the honey you buy from the store. So honey from the hives, which is not processed, which is not pasteurized. Mm. Because otherwise, it is sugar and there's no nutrition value when it's processed. Or oh, dates are also sweet. Yeah? Date. Dates. Yeah, this sugar, it has to be date sugar if you have to put it in... Mm, yeah, it is. See, but if you have to do it, if you bake things, you can use dates and you know do that. This uh, so there are different ones. We can talk about different ones for those who still want to give a little bit of sugar. I have a list of good ones. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. I think oh, I'm learning a lot. I'm really learning a lot. Let's I see if we can do. We can stay here for a long time. Let's see if we can do another <laughs> meeting and. Uh, I think uh, uh, Gladwell and Rahab, uh, uh, if you can help us coordinate for the next meeting, uh, I would really, really appreciate that. Uh, you are the expert, uh, we are your students. And uh, we appreciate your time and everything that you do. Thank you guys, hope you can now go and practice. <laughs> Implement what you have learned. It's easier to talk about what you know, but it's very hard to leave. Yeah, but you can start from somewhere. Even if it's one step, it's good towards the yeah. goal. And we want to hear your testimony next time. Uh, okay. right? Yes, I will give it to you. So we have more time.
Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Have a good night, and uh, we love you guys. Love you guys. Good night. Oh, we didn't play. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, we're going to get that. Yeah. Uh, Diana, Diana, you're going to pray for us. Okay, Diana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's pray. <clears throat> God, we come at you this evening. We thank you, God, for all that you've uh, given us, all the knowledge that we've uh, gained from this meeting. Uh, we really pray for the presenters, uh, that you may bless them, especially for their generosity, uh, for will their willingness to share with us their information freely, and to just support this community. We thank you for all that uh, we have been able to, to listen to, and we pray that you may give us the courage to go ahead and practice what we've just had. We know that it's not easy, but uh, you're going to be with us, oh God, as we take uh, our little steps into the right direction. We pray for everyone tonight that you may take care of them, give them uh, blessings for them and their families wherever they are, and that you may keep us safe until we meet again. We thank you, we love you, and we honor you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, guys. Love you. Thank Bye. you, guys. Thank you.